Bom dia, boa tarde, boa noite, or whatever the case may be. My name is Marcus, and I'm the host of the Black Brazil Today YouTube channel, as well as the BlackBrazilToday.com blog, where I analyze Brazil from the perspective of race. So today is a topic that I've talked about much, a lot over the, what, 14 years of the existence of the BlackBrazilToday.com blog. But nevertheless, it's something that still comes up from time to time. It was something that fascinated me when I first discovered that there was a racial problem in Brazil. So today we're talking about everyone knows about Jim Crow era United States and apartheid in South Africa, but Brazil's racism works without segregation laws. So anyway, before I get into this video, I um, want to request that you like this video, share this video, subscribe to the channel and click on the notification bell. With that said, let's get directly into the video to, for today and, you know, the person who I wanted to react to. OK, so. Before I get into today's video, I want to just talk about a couple of things to put this in context. And these are, th again, these are things that I've talked about throughout the, the existence of the blog and then the YouTube channel. The idea of legalized segregation in United States and South Africa. Everybody's familiar with Jim Crow and apartheid. Um, Brazil, on the other hand, did not have any just flat out segregation laws that kept races segregated. Right. Um, the argument of the prohibition of miscegenation, we've seen it in South Africa, we've seen it in the United States, but it didn't exist in Brazil legally. So Brazilian authorities and leaders have always argued that the lack of anti-miscegenation laws always says that, well, Brazil is far ahead of the United States and, and, uh, and South Africa because we've been mixing here for centuries. One thing I always like to point out is that people seem to forget that before the oncome of Jim Crow laws in the United States, miscegenation was pretty normalized in the United States. I mean, when you read the history books, you know, starting from the Jim Crow era, then that segregation popped up. And now with the fall of anti uh, miscegenation laws from the, uh, the the Loving case, I think in 1967, we see that the United States is clearly moving in the same direction of Brazil. But, you know, following Brazil's example of mixing for centuries, it doesn't seem to have alleviated a racism problem. So it's ridiculous that somebody could argue that I've talked about this in previous videos, just because people choose to have relations across racial lines. It does not disturb the racial hierarchy. It's clear in Brazil. It continues to be true in the United States It's clearly still in existence in South Africa, even without, you know, legalized segregation. Um. What I've always argued is my point, I don't really, it doesn't really matter which is racism worse in the Brazil or the United States or South Africa. That's not my question. My question has always been, which of these three systems is more effective in keeping black or African descendant people in their so-called place? Okay. So the discussion that compared United States versus Brazil versus South Africa, there's been numerous studies on this. You know, here we have a, a, a paper by the famed uh, Brazil sociologist Antonio Sergio Alfredo Guimarães, Combating Racism, Brazil, South Africa, and the United States. You have the book by Anthony Marx called Making Race and Nation. It's a book in my collection from years ago. In the 2001 uh, conference, conference Against Racism uh, in South Africa in Durban in 2001. I'll, I'll never forget that because Brazil sent delegates there. Obviously, they were uh, representatives from the United States. And shortly after that conference started, you know, that's when September 11th happened. So I'll, I'll never forget when that went down. But anyway, the, the question of how racism functions in different countries has will never go away. This is always going to be a hot topic for comparison and analysis. How is it that Brazil managed to keep vast numbers of black people out of positions of power, out of middle class lifestyles, you know, out of government. How is it that it's taken this long just for black Brazilians to organize, to start trying to get a piece of the pie in Brazil? And they did this without segregation legally, you know, even though socially we've seen several examples of people uh, rejecting to blacks being in certain areas of certain areas of big cities in Brazil. We've seen it. That's been that's been documented as well. Um, uh, an older citizen that I knew in Sao Paulo who came from a city, <clears throat> a smaller city in the state of Rio de Janeiro. She remembers when she came to Sao Paulo, black people were not allowed to go to the movie theaters. 
And this is something that I've seen. When you talk to people who've been around for a long time in Brazil, they clearly remember some of this segregation. So because there was no law, it doesn't mean that Brazil didn't try to segregate black people. There were areas they would where, OK, blacks are not allowed here. Um, you know, we have the actor Milton Gonsalves, who passed away a few years ago. He just talked about how when he was a kid, you know, there were areas in Sao Paulo where it was just like, you know, blacks aren't allowed here. You know, what are you doing here? So you don't have to have legal segregation in order to have social segregation. When Martin Luther King tried to bring his movement to the north and he went into cities like Chicago, he was met with some of the most hostile racism that he had ever seen. Whereas in, the, you know, OK, which racism is more hostile? It might be legally segregated in, 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 in the South, but then you come to the, to the North and they're much more violent with their racism, even though you don't have segregation laws there. So the absence of segregation laws don't prove anything. We've seen this in the United States. The whole country didn't have segregation. So how do you explain that? How do you explain that part of the United States has segregation laws and another part didn't, but then you have this same uh, racial hierarchy throughout the country? You know, that's been my point all along. So. Again, today's video, everyone knows about Jim Crow era United States and apartheid in South Africa, but Brazil's racism work without segregation law. So I want to talk a little bit about this. I want to feature a video um, by a professor of history. I just want to just overdub what he had to say about this topic. So let's just check out what he had to say. His name is uh, Fabio Conceição. Again, he's a historian and he's talking a little bit about this in this short clip. So let's check it out. In the United States, from 1870 to 1960, you had a set of laws that supported and legitimized segregation practices. It was legal to segregate. White school, black school. In South Africa, too, apartheid was instituted in the Constitution. It was put there in the Constitution in 1948, right? You couldn't have interracial marriage. Black people couldn't vote. Black people couldn't buy property. That was in the law. The German parliament passed the Nuremberg laws in 1930s. Jews couldn't buy property. Anti-Semitism was legal. Look how sophisticated Brazilian racism is. It doesn't need a law. It doesn't need a law to segregate. It doesn't need a law for black people to be absent from spaces of privilege and power. And that's why racism in Brazil works so well. It is systematically denied. If it's denied, we don't need to mobilize to confront it. It's part of the norm. You have institutions that deny the existence of racism, and you have individuals who deny the existence of racism. You have public authorities, for example, who deny the existence of racism despite the evidence. Because we believe in two false ideas that has sustained racism in Brazil for a long time, Daniel. One of them is racial democracy. This idea of believing that everyone has the same opportunities, that everyone is equal. And the other belief that many people also believe in and value is the idea of meritocracy. If you try hard, you'll get there. No. The opportunities are equal for everyone. And we know that they're not. There are people who, because of their identity, are overlooked, historically overlooked. So you heard what Professor Fabio had to say about this. He packed a lot in that short clip from this interview. And these are things that I've talked about for a while. This is what I'm saying. For years, Brazilian authorities have denied that racism existed in Brazil. Uh, there was a hard there was a, a hard line time during the military dictatorship of 1964 to 1985 where you could actually be com uh, committing a, a crime for speaking out and saying, uh, speaking on the uh, racism existing in Brazil. Numerous activists during that time, particularly in the mid to late 70s, early 80s, a lot of activists who were speaking out against racism ended up leaving the country because in a dangerous, uh, like powerful dictatorship, people were being murdered, people were being disappeared. So they decided to take their message overseas because they couldn't speak freely about how Brazilian racism got down. Right. So he mentioned the same thing that, you know, that's been it's taken this while this long time for Brazil, black 
activists to take their message to the public because there was it was, the racism was systematically denied in Brazil. It was hard for black Brazilians to mobilize because they were also under the belief that racism didn't exist. That's a thing of the United States. That's a thing of South Africa. Well, no, we don't have that racism here. There have been activists who talked about how they want to believe that at, at once upon a time, like, no, you know, racism, that's the thing in the United States. You know, we mix here. We don't have segregation by law. So how can we have a race? How can we have a race problem? You know, we still have authorities, you know, the Bolsonaro, the Jair Bolsonaro uh, presidency of a few years back, his vice president, Bolsonaro, the president, both denied that racism was a big issue in Brazil. So even in the 21st century, you have politicians who will openly deny that there's a race problem in Brazil. So the idea of racial democracy was something that was spread in Brazil starting sometime in the 1930s or 1940s. And it hypnotized black Brazilians themselves, the very people who are victimized by racism in Brazil. So I wanted to talk a little bit about um, how, how does, what are people saying about what goes on in Brazil? Because looking at all the comments that I've received over the years, Perhaps millions of people never knew that you had this race problem in Brazil. OK, it was sometime in the late 1940s or early 1950s where UNESCO started sponsoring uh, studies to they wanted to know how is it that Brazil managed to get, you know, managed to mount a society with various races and not have the race problems that you had in South Africa and the United States. And when they sent these people to do these studies, whether they were from France or the United States or Brazilian sociologists themselves, they discovered a race problem in Brazil. Like how did Brazil skate under the radar of being a racist nation for so long? So this is what Professor Fabio Conceição was talking about in the interview just now. Um, if you punch up just, you know, if you can read Portuguese, there's just numerous sources on this topic. Like I said, I've been talking about this, you know, two decades now. OK, but you pull it up, you'll see segregation signs coming from South Africa. You know, Black Lives Matter. Here's another sign from South Africa, you know, color waiting room. OK, so this is something that you're accustomed to seeing. If you're familiar with history of how legalized segregation, and legalized racism worked in both South Africa and the United States. But the non-existence of such laws in Brazil made people believe, well, you don't have this problem in Brazil. Of course, we know now that that's definitely not true. In Brazil today, they're talking about what's called the genocide of the Black Brazilian. Uh, the great Abagias de Nascimento has been, you know, uh, debunking the racial democracy myth for a number of years. He died in 2011, but he went to his grave fighting against this idea that Brazil didn't have racism. It, people speaking out against the idea that pe because Brazilians mix we can't have any racism here. And I remember this particular picture. Um, I forget what year it was from, but it was during one of the national marches against racism, uh, Black Consciousness Day in Brazil, which is November 20th. And this group marched with a big banner that said miscegenation is also genocide. They're saying historically Brazil has openly spoken about we want the black population to disappear through miscegenation. If we encourage black and brown people here to mix with whites, within a few centuries, Brazil will be completely white. So opposite in the United States, they practice a, a certain type of segregation. In Brazil, they actively promoted uh, miscegenation with the, the, the goal of the black population disappearing. Um, I spoke on Durban the national conference, the international conference against world conference against racism and racial discrimination, which happened in Durban, South Africa. We see the date here was uh, August 31st to September 7th, 2001. Again, about four days, four days before uh, September 11th happened. I, I, I distinctly remember that because I remember being in Brazil in early 2001 and people were asking me, you know, are you going to go to the conference in Durban? I didn't end up going, but, you know, I followed a lot of the reports that were coming out of that conference. It was a big deal at the time. So lots of sources that I have, if you want to just understand, how does Brazilian racism work so well? Is there a black genocide going on in Brazil? Considering a number of important factors, the answer may be surprising. This is an article from 2018. Of course, I just spoke about the idea of miscegenation. We want to mix black people out of the population. So United States segregated black people. We don't want any black blood mixing with the white population. And if it does, 
you automatically black. Brazil didn't institute that, but they went at racism from an opposite direction. We want black people to disappear, so we will act actively mix with them. Causes and consequences of miscegenation, racial mixture as a weapon of domination and extinction of the oppressed group. One of the women in this article, this woman right here. Now, it's, it's funny to me because this guy is not white. OK, this is I guess is either her, you know, her significant other or her husband. I'm not sure. He actually reminds me of uh, a professor I knew at Wayne State some years ago. But um, she said openly that the, the, the baby that she was going to have had to be white. Why would a black person say that unless they've been taught that throughout their lives? Obviously, this girl did not come out white, but she's clearly a lot lighter than her mother. Um. If you go online, you'll find numerous studies about this idea of what were race, race relations like in Brazil? What are they today? Uh, as I said, in the 1950s, UNESCO, they wanted to understand how Brazil managed to get a quote unquote racial democracy with all of these races mixing. But what did they find? Uh, let me see. The UNESCO project frustrated expectations that Brazil could be used as a positive example for race relations as an, you know, as an instrument in the struggle against racism, because they went to Brazil under the understanding there wasn't any racism, but the studies came back and said, that's not at all true. We found a serious problem of race in Brazil. Um, Brazilians surprised by racism in South Africa, but think racism in Brazil is worse. Although in South Africa, it is more visible. Mm. That's intriguing. Again, I always look this. This is another article from 2015. All of these can be found on the blackbrazildtoday.com blog. Racial democracy or informal apartheid, South Africa and Brazil, two historical con cultural contexts and different times, the same segregation. What racial democracy has ever existed in Brazil? The, 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 the reports are very clear on this. Um, this is just a picture from, you know, apartheid era, era South Africa. This is a picture from Brazil. You see like five or six black guys all with a uh, like lasso around their neck, you know, being taken into police custody. Um, Beyond Racism, this is another book, Race and Inequality in Brazil, South Africa and the United States. So there, people have been studying the and making comparative analysis between the three countries for a number of years. I think with the voice of the black population in Brazil speaking louder and growing over the last two decades, it's clear that we know that obviously Racism is a serious problem in Brazil. So anyway, I just wanted to bring that back to the fore. Uh, there's always going to be someone wanting to study these three countries from the perspective of race. Um, this is what uh, Professor Fabio Conceição was talking about. I like a lot of the things that this guy has to talk about. So I'm curious to know. Uh, I see I get comments from all over the world, whether our people are in Latin America, they're in North America, they're in Africa, Europe. I get comments from all over the world. I'm curious to know what you all thought about this video. Definitely drop some comments in the comment section. Let's get this discussion going again. Um, like this video, share this video, consider subscribing to the channel. Click on the notification bell so that you know every time I put up a new video. And with that said, I'm going to end this video here and request that you all come back. Check out the next video that I post.